Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now, would it would it be wrong if I asked you to play uh, like a Gregorian medieval sound on it on that with because it's equal temperament? Well, it sounds kind of silly, but I can can give you some examples of okay. wonderful uh, chords that I use. It's, so it's okay. Uh, it's a silly example, show, when... <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, for example, when I teach at the conservatory, I always tell the students, uh, because most of them don't really know church modes, but then I tell them it's actually kind of film music, because they use it in films all the time, of course, church modes, yep. because they're so effective. So I give them some examples, like when you have a simple melody, and I would harmonize it in a normal minor key, like... Um, uh, <laughs> of boring but if you use mm. chords like mm. and then suddenly it, it, it's lifted up like now it's something uh, more profound because you use a Dorian mode for example so so that and, and if you could describe um the, what is different from that, from let's jump to the 17th century then? Or was that 15th? Was that 15th century? Well, this, this is more uh, already, I mean, I, I'm using complete chords now, so that's already Renaissance uh, we're talking if about. If we could go back uh, without chords, what would that sound like? Well, interestingly enough, we don't really have organs anymore. Uh, we only have so, some, some parts of organs from that period, but you mm. have to imagine, it. of course, it started with... Gregorian chant and then the, right. the parallel organum mm. and that was copied in the organs so you could play an organ that only had fifths all the time so you would have the kind of music that it just uh, had ornaments on the fifth like Sounds great. And then in perfect fifths <laughs> yeah. and, and on a very big sound of, of an organ in a big yeah. church. And it, yeah. it really must have been something. And for me, that's also part of, of the fun that you can really relive history in a way because it's so much better to, to try things at a keyboard, how it developed and uh, develop some understanding of it. And then you really understand the history, how something... Well, of course, the fifth just came from people listening to Gregorian chant and they heard another note all the time, yeah. especially when they were reciting on one note, you can hear that fifth all the time. So that's how the fifth came in. And then later people realized, wait a second, there is another note. It's softer, but it's there too. And that's the third. And then <laughs> right. the Renaissance is born. I mean, it's so easy, actually, when you yeah. think about it. Yeah. And it's also fun uh, to work with students and to really explain it to them. And then they have to try things like that. And suddenly it's not theory anymore from a book that you just have to learn some numbers and some facts. Right. But suddenly you realize this makes complete sense. And then from the Renaissance with the, the church modes and all the, the chords in, in uh, root position, you go to inversions, uh, you go to a dominant seven chord that some new notes appear. And then you gradually go to the Baroque period.